Welcome to the end of the world. You're here with Hudson once again. Uh, straight into our news stories for today. So the first one is the uh, UK automated photo checker is racist, according to the BBC. <laughs> the insanity of this. It's Firstly, it just shows again, once again, the BBC are so far left. It's unbelievable. You know, take a look at the stuff they say about Trump all the time. And you'll see clearly how far left they are. But the fact that they're running this right now, you know, when we've had this kind of BLM stuff, which, um, you know, if you say the phrase Black Lives Matter, of course everyone agrees. But if you're talking about Black Lives Matter, the organisation, you know, that's obviously completely disagree with, think it's terrible. But back to the story. Story of this uh, racist photo checker. Like, first of all, it's a piece of software. It can't be racist. It doesn't have an opinion. It's not one person who's coded this thing. It's a group of people who will have done it. You think we got some, or, you know, whoever, got some neo-Nazi organisation together and said, oh, let's, uh, let's create something just so we can piss black people off when they send their photos through for our, you know, for the passports. We'll make sure they don't get one. Not easily, anyway. They'll have to. They'll then have to go into the passport office. Uh, are you insane? Of course not. And it's the. It's clearly something that they have planned. That they have planned to send out at this particular time when they believe that racial tensions are high, where there's some clickbait to be made off this. Because look at the Daily Mail, September two thousand nineteen. The exact same story was ran. And then again, the Daily Mail in February 2020, they ran the same story. But BBC, hold on, hold on. And then apparently it's because the it's a study. It's not a fucking study. No, it's not. It's the fact that you're seeing all this, you know, you can say racist everywhere now. You know, my sandwich was too cold. It's racist. You know, my walk to work's too long, it's racist. Right, shut up. Do, don't, you need to just calm, when they should be calming things down, because it's a public service, because it's <laughs> it's not, supposedly the BBC is not a commercial entity, should not be putting stuff like this out there. So, first chain bell for the day, for the BBC for doing this. Okay, on to our second story. So Facebook bans a nipple tattoo artist. Okay. When I first saw that, I thought, who's tattooing nipples? Because that's going to hurt. It's not. It's someone who tattoos a nipple onto a person who is missing a nipple. Okay. Now, firstly, how can you ban... A tattoo is art. Some people don't agree. You're wrong. You just don't understand what you're talking about. Um... But a tattoo is art, so if you're going to ban that, then you shouldn't be able to post any pictures of anything by William Etty, uh, you know, pictures of the Venus de Milo or the Statue of David, none of that, because that's, you know, obviously obscene. It's nudity, it's sexual content. It's ridiculous. So that's the tattoo itself. Now, secondly, this woman has um, gone to such a particular place to say, you know, people who are unfortunately missing a nipple, I my guess would be that for the most part, that's because they've had a mastectomy, they've had breast cancer, both women and men, predominantly women, obviously, um, you know, to think, if I can make them feel just a little bit better about themselves, you know, I've seen pictures of this and from what I can tell, you know, incredibly realistic. Um, and it's... For someone like Facebook to say, no, you can't promote this. Imagine waking up every day and having to look in the mirror or being, you know, feeling less, undressing in front of a partner or, or you know, going to the... If you're a man, going to the, the swimming pool or, or to the beach or wherever, you know, and to feel less than whole 
you know, because this thing has happened to you. You know, it's through no fault of your own. Unfortunately, this has happened, and now you've, you know, you're missing a part of yourself. And Facebook say, let's not let, don't make people aware of it. Don't make people aware that, you know, you could maybe have this thing that might make you feel just that, that tiny bit better. Oh. Second, shame bell for Facebook for banning this, you know. If this woman was a charity, there was n- there's no way anyone would ban it. But because, you know, it's because it's a solo enterprise, you know, it's so easy to, to do that. And this woman, I would guess, has very little recourse to, you know, to get a business back out there. There we go. So, third story of the day. I am, um, I'm a little bit behind the ball on this one, but this is, uh, I wanted to talk about Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. I remember Prince Harry, you know, I, I grew up seeing these things that Prince Harry did and, you know, he kind of made some stupid mistakes. Um, but he was actually more relatable to people. You know, he was he's never going to be the, the king, but he was a royal that we could kind of go, kind of like, more like one of us. You know, he made these mistakes and, you know, he says the odd stupid thing. That's fine. That's what we all do. That's, we're just people. Fine. Okay. And then, as time goes on, he meets, obviously, he's married now to Meghan Markle and, I, she's got to have one hell of a pussy. I, how the hell has she made him do all this shit? Why is he allowing her to make that to to dominate what he does? You know what he says, what he thinks, where he goes, who he, you know, everything, every aspect of his life is dominated by this stupid bimbo. Um, you know she's. Uh, She's tried suing um, for a newspaper printing a letter that she sent out when, in the same breath, you know, there's a book published with all personal details. So she already had a ruling against that to say that she has to pay for their court costs as well as her own, which I believe is somewhere in the region of 180,000. That's okay, because, you know, Harry, I'm sure, will foot that bill. And then they move, you know, they're now living in America, um, you know, and we've had uh, a royal household that's always been bipartisan. You know, they they don't get involved in politics either way. They will say nice things, support everybody, you know, they'll say someone's doing a good job, but they will not get involved. They won't say, you should vote for this person, you should vote for that person. And Meghan and Harry have gone on this stupid long thing of basically, you know, denigrating Trump and, and, you know, saying that people should vote for Joe Biden. It just tells you instantly they know nothing about politics. Um, And then Harry's started to come out with these things, which are, as I recall... So excuse me if I get this, you know, if it's not word for word or, or slightly, you know, miss miss saying what he said. Um, he said, I didn't realise, you know, how racist the world was. You know, I thought I knew what was going on and then realised how wrong I was. This is a white world built for white people. Where the hell has that come from apart from Meghan Markle? You know, it's, uh, to say the very word systemic racism is idiotic because that would suggest that every system in place is racist in itself. And therefore, as well, if you if you go by critical race theory, that any system you exist within that is racist automatically makes you a racist, even if you yourself are not racist. It makes no sense, and to say it is stupid. 
Now, granted, there are racist people in the world. There are racist things that happen in the world. But there, it's, it's systemic racism does not exist. This is not a white world for white people. This is a world for people. We all live in it. You know, if you were so bothered about racism, then what you should be promoting is the goodness in people. You know, promoting unity. You're not promoting unity. It's like the same shit with Sainsbury's. We say, we're going to have a, a, a safe space for black people. Uh, what are you talking about? That's segregation. You're saying this is a black-only space. You know, if they then went and put a water fountain in, went blacks only. Uh, <laughs> it's racist. It's racist. You've just flipped the script. It's insane. You need to shut the fuck up. And Prince Harry, I mean, he's apparently, you know, they're allowed now to, to weigh in on shit like this because they've taken a step back from royal duties. Well, then he's not Prince Harry at all, is he? He's Henry Windsor. He's not Prince Harry. He's not the Duke of Sussex and she's Meghan Markle's fuck all. You know, she, <laughs> to to have to listen to anything that they've got to say is, is just lowering all our IQ points by at least 20. So if you were average before, I'm sorry, but, you know, they're putting you in at the bottom of society now. And they've got a deal with Netflix. What is it, 100 million? For, for what? I don't care. I don't care what you've got to say. I'm sure that all of this will be promoting how racist we all are. Look at all these problems in the world. Instead of looking at, you know, the, the bigger issues, the wider issues. You know, there, there are bigger things going on. COVID is a bigger issue. If you want to do something with your voice, you know, promote mask wearing or prevent, you know, keeping the, the older generation safe. Something. But no. So, third shame bell of the day. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Shame on you. Peace.